Hello, church, and welcome to the Midweek Pastors Update for Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. As one of my friends uh, said in in one of his Facebook posts, what a year the last week has been. And it has been a lot. We've had a lot coming our way, and I hope all of you are managing um, just the various uh, realities and tensions and stresses that come with uh, with this new year, we left 2020 looking forward to what 2021 would bring. And uh, well, I think it still has a lot of promise to it, but uh, certainly a very challenging start. A couple news and notes um, items, though, uh, I want to get into. Uh, the first is you may have heard that we have been returned to the purple tier in terms of our uh, COVID uh, positioning in the in the county so what that means is that in the near future we will reevaluate starting up a live gathered worship in the sanctuary now at at 20 percent capacity having masks social distance all that stuff but we're going to look into that again not this coming sunday but uh perhaps for the next sunday so be looking for information uh, from the church office with more specifics about that we understand that um, a lot of you, and in fact, we've gotten the feedback from the worship um, survey that a number of folks are really hesitant. We, we, have, we respect that. So just know that there's never pressure. Um, we will do everything we can to, to make worship opportunities um, across all uh, ways of interacting. So we'll do a live service. We'll attempt to live stream the service. So if you watch at 10 a.m. on Sunday, you'll be able to watch the live uh, version of the service, maybe feel a little more connected that way. But then we'll also continue to um, to record the services and present that on our church website. So um, we're looking into to all those options. But just be, be paying attention because it looks like um, it's at least a positive move uh, for the time being. I also want to encourage, I know this is a little late because tomorrow, uh, Thursday, January 14th, is that webinar I was mentioning. And Barb Grandstaff already corrected this, but I'll reiterate too, that the correct time is actually 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, That was my mistake earlier, having said seven o'clock, but five o'clock Pacific time. It's free. It does require a registration though, but it's a webinar that's really uh, allowing different directors and speakers from agencies that we work with uh, within the church. And many of you know, just to kind of give you an update of of how they've been managing over this last year, what they've been doing, the creative um, uh, resiliency that they've uh, been able to find to, to get the work done and to meet the need as they find it. So I think we could all use something uplifting. So I would encourage you to consider uh, signing up for that webinar. Again, that's Thursday, January 14th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And look at the, look for the church, uh, go to the church website, uh, or you should have gotten an email with that link. Um, oh, I want to say once again, thank you for all of you who are continuing to send in funds, uh, supporting our, our effort that we've just recently created to assist individuals and families in the Auburn community uh, who have, who have specific need related to COVID, loss of job, uh, being sick. So, so far you have donated nearly $3,000. Um, that might have come from your stimulus, stimulus money, but it also just might come from your own generosity, your own heart. So thank you all for that support. And we're gonna be getting, uh, having conversations about how to allocate that money in uh, the best way we, we can find. So thank you again. And if you'd like to continue to donate, we'll continue to find people who could use that support. Uh, please do send a check to the church. And then in the memo line, just write FCC uh, COVID Relief Fund. So thank you very much again. Well, like many of you, it's just been an overwhelming time of um, trying to take in all the information coming our way with what happened in the Capitol last week, then in the responses to it and the anger and the back back and forth and the accusations and just how hard it is these days to access uh, truth or even a reality that that we all seem to be able to agree on. It's just... It's just such a challenge. It's just, it's, it's, it feels insane sometimes. 
um, how hard it is for us to find common ground in what um, seems like there should be some areas, and I trust that there are. Um, but in the midst of, um, of all the turmoil, you know, in our lives related to COVID, related to uh, the transition of government now, I came across a reflection by a well-known uh, biblical scholar and, and pastor named Walter Brueggemann. And what he did is he, he was reflecting on uh, a wonderful passage from 1 Samuel chapter 3. And right at the beginning of that chapter is the story of the call of the prophet Samuel. And it's that classic story where Samuel has a teacher named Eli. And, and Samuel is a young, a young man at that point. And, and he's, he's just going to sleep and he keeps getting woken up by a voice that says, Samuel, Samuel. And he goes up, he doesn't understand what to do. So he goes to his teacher, Eli. And Eli uh, tells him to go back to bed. I didn't call you. You know, go back to bed. You don't know what, you're just hearing things. Well, finally, after, after three times of this, Eli understands what's happening. And he says to Samuel, you know what? Go back to bed. It's, it's, the, it's the Lord trying to, to talk to you. Okay, so next time you hear that voice calling you, you, you say, I, I'm your servant. Tell me what you want me to, you know, what do you want to tell me? And so Samuel does this. The voice calls him one more time but says something really challenging to him. And he basically, the voice says to Samuel that because of, of the uh, blasphemy that has emerged from the house of Eli, so his teacher, his house, um, that God is going to remove them from, from power and God will, will, will shift their standing forever. And it's the story of, of God sort of entering in and responding um, to, uh, you know, the, the shift, or, or actually initiating, you know, a, a shift in power. And Samuel, of course, is really hesitant to say anything about it because he doesn't want Eli to be mad at him. But Eli uh, insists, and so Samuel tells him he holds nothing back, and and it goes on, and and Eli um, accepts. He basically says, well, if that's what God sees fit to do, then that's what must be done. And it's just this powerful story, um, not only about Samuel's call, but just about um, the, see the, the, the seeds of change and how they get initiated and, and when change happens and how it happens. And of course, uh, Brueggemann's reflection actually kind of picks up on themes that are very close to what a lot of us um, have been going through, have been, have been attending to, have been watching over the last week or so. And so um, I just want to offer this reflection uh, that, that he wrote, and it's called Holy Regime Change. We speak easily and glibly of regime change. We imagine it's some regime other than our own, and we imagine our rightful capacity to make such change. But then you, in scripture, you making regime change, you overthrowing long established priestly power, you moving against things holy and treasured among us, you causing endings that we had never thought possible and, and you making newness beyond our conjuring and just behind old Eli and his loss of regime comes this other voice from your inner circle summoning to radical newness summoning to repent and then to a new regime the kingdom of God is at hand and all our old regimes of heart and of mind, of, of money and of power, of privilege and of entitlement, all are, are in one instant placed in jeopardy. Give to us courage to, to hear your summons. Give to us freedom to relinquish old regimes that have gone stale in hardness and in disobedience. And give us ease 
to receive new governance that reshapes everything, even our deep treasures. We live by your word. We await your news, but we do so tentatively, reluctantly, knowing the cost to all that is settled and and old. So come, power of newness, come here, come soon.